Hey guys, um, I want to talk real quick about the rise of Skywalker. As you know, and I'll put the links below, I did a full review with it with my buddy Alex Figueroa and Jamel Lopez on uh, Alex's channel, um, uh, you know, Geek, HD Geek. I could be saying it wrong. I'm sorry, Alex. It's kind of late. Um, but I also wanted to like kind of like add a few more things about what I consider to be the good moments from Rise of Skywalker, like moments that I thought were uh, cool. And I just wanted to share that with you right here on Strange Planet NYC. The first moment was um, that I thought was cool was Palpatine's reveal. Now, as much as there's a lot of debate about why they brought back Palpatine, um, as if to send this whole saga off to its conclusion, um, you know, that that can be debated and everything, but it was kind of and still it was, for me at least it was still kind of cool seeing um, Emperor Palpatine back uh, doing his uh, Darth Sidiousness. Um, he looked like something out of he looked like a ghoul. He looked like uh, something out of a horror movie. He had like you know white eyes and uh, you know I wonder if he was even blind. He might have been blind. Um, his, his hands were pretty much corroded, you know, and I figured all of this was from the Death Star when he was thrown down the shaft by Vader, um, not to mention the life support system he was connected to. So there's a lot there. So I enjoyed that very much. The other thing that I appreciated in Rise of Skywalker was the TIE fighter chase towards the beginning when Poe Dameron was piloting the Millennium Falcon, how they were like going up and then, you know, trying to get away from the TIE fighters. They got this information and they needed to um, get out of there real quick uh, from the First Order TIE fighters. I thought that was pretty badass. I enjoyed that very much, um, except for the hyperspace part when he was like jumping from planet to planet to planet. I know Han Solo did it um, in the first film, which was pretty cool, and he did it only once, but I think that was slight overkill. But anyway, this is about what I appreciated. Um, the next thing was 3PO's mind wipe. Um, I thought that to be a very touching moment. It would be the second time C-3PO had his mind wiped. I didn't know what was going to come of that. I understand the reason why it had to be done in order for the deciphering of what the Sith hieroglyphics were to be revealed on that dagger. Now, having said that, of course, if you saw the movie, you know that he got his memory restored by R2-D2, so it was kind of like, um, okay, so I guess 3PO's back, and he, we didn't really lose him. But uh, it, it, seeing that experience happen the way it did and how he acted after he got his mind wiped initially as if he was in Brand New Droid um, was pretty funny. You know, I, I thought that was pretty cool, and they added to the story. The fourth thing I enjoyed that I appreciated from Rise of Skywalker was the Knights of Ren reveal. We've been really waiting um, for these three. The last time we saw the lights, Knights of Ren were in, was in The Force Awakens in that vision sequence that Rey had. And I thought that was pretty amazing. I did not understand the point of that sequence, especially when it came to this movie like like I'm like well was this a vision of past or of present well, like what was that even about but the the Knights of Ren looked amazing and they looked pretty cool and it was good to see that they were with Kylo Ren this finally another thing I appreciated was the Death Star sequence on Endor the second Death Star the ruins of the second Death Star when Rey and Kylo Ren fought ferociously on the surface of the second Death Star it was kind of like a parallel to um, Revenge of the Sith when we saw Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting amongst waves of lava. You know, in this case, it was waves of water. So it, I, I kind of appreciated that parallel. Another thing was Leia's death. Um, the thing that uh, affected me the most regarding Leia's death was that when she passed away, R2-D2 was with her. There was nobody else that was with her um, except for R2. And... That was interesting because R2 was there when she was born. Uh, if you saw at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Episode 3, you see that happen. So it's kind of like, oh, wow, that was kind of deep there. But okay. Another thing I appreciated was when Luke Skywalker 
even though he was a Force Ghost, he raised the X-Wing, his X-Wing, uh, Red 5, from the water. You know, and we can get into the debate on how, after all these years on being submerged, that the ship still functions, that Ray was able to get out of there and even fly in it. Um, we could get into all that, but the fact that he raised the, the X-Wing out of the water by the power of the Force... You know, and you hear the reference from Empire Strikes Back with the music theme, which was Yoda's music theme, when he raised Luke's um, ship out of the swamp in Empire Strikes Back. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool, and I thought that was a nice callback. The other part I liked in Rise of Skywalker was when the cavalry came to the rescue, when it looked like there was just a few Resistance fighters fighting all these you know, Final Order or Second Empire Star Destroyers, the whole fleet of them, and Poe was telling everybody, I'm sorry, I guess this is it. I'm sorry, I failed everybody. And all of a sudden, all these ships came out of nowhere led by the Millennium Falcon, and it was like to the rescue. You know, I loved it, Lando Carissian being back and, and kind of like, you know, helping with that. I thought that was very cool. I thought that was very cool. The other thing I appreciated in Rise of Skywalker was this, this cult of the Sith. You know, how Emperor Palpatine had these, you know, you heard this chanting and all that. And it reminded me of Darth Maul when you saw him in The Force of War, in, I'm sorry, The Phantom Menace. And you see this whole, like, arena of, of people, you know, uh, whether or not they were dark side users can be left to be desired. I have no clue. I don't think so. Um, but they were worshippers of the Sith, and they were like they were the ones that were kind of keeping Palpatine alive all this time, and making these Snoke clones <clears throat> and all that. Because you see it in the beginning of the movie, like a whole bunch of little Snokes in a jar or whatever. I was like, dang, that's something out of Alien Resurrection that movie. But whatever, I thought it was pretty cool because you know it also reminded me of of the Senate Hall in the prequel trilogy. Like, it had that same, you know, big awe of it, except it was dark and it was creepy. It, was, it didn't look as pretty. <laughs> the voices of the Jedi, something else I appreciated, because you heard voices like Qui-Gon Jinn. You heard Ahsoka. You heard Luke, of course. You heard Anakin Skywalker. You heard Obi-Wan. You heard Yoda. You heard, you know, Qui-Gon Jinn. I said Qui-Gon Jinn already. And, you know, and Yoda, I said Yoda already. Those were good. You know, I thought that was a nice uh, way of, of having Rey connect to the voices of Jedi past. You know, and it connects to the preview where, you know, where we heard Luke say to Rey, a thousand generations live in you now. Okay, here's something I didn't even know. I found this out actually during my talk with Alex and, and Jamel in our review. That Finn is a force sensitive. Now, how this happened, how this came to be, I have no clue. Um, I, you know, at first I was kind of like, oh, God, really? They're really going to throw a monkey wrench in there? But in a way, it's kind of not. I actually appreciate it now that I really had a chance to think about it because, in truth, we didn't know Leia was a foreign sensitive until the end of Empire Strikes Back. I mean, forget the fact that she was Luke's sister. We didn't know about that until Return of the Jedi. But when we saw that, that Leia had some kind of ability there you know uh, that mu that that meant something you know that meant something so i think that finn's reveal that he is now a force sensitive is going to mean something moving forward i presume the ray will teach him kind of like get him involved in all that stuff but that's not something we're going to see i mean i think they're done with that the final and honestly the best thing for me um in this film was the epilogue of the film where we see Ray on Tatooine, the very planet, you know, the very planet where it all started back in 1977. It, it only, it was only fitting that it ends, it ended there. Uh, she goes to the Lars homestead. Um, she looks around, it's abandoned now. There's nothing else going on. And um, she, she buries Luke's and Leia's lightsabers, both their lightsabers. Leia had a lightsaber. That was, that was, that was another thing I appreciated, actually, now that I think about it. You know, can't wait to get that collectible when it comes out. Um, you know, she buries it, reveals her own lightsaber that she look, it appears she made from her staff, a yellow-colored lightsaber. Again, collectible coming up. 
definitely going to pick it up. Um, but the idea that she was on Tatooine, um, you know, where, where it all started, really. I mean, you know, it was so deep for me. You know, it, I actually got moved at that moment. I was like, wow, this is where, where it all started, you know, and, and it, it was, um, it was a coming home to me in that respect. I mean, with all the flaws of The Rise of Skywalker, along with the other films of the prequel, of the sequel, sorry, trilogy, you know, I still appreciated it for what it was. Uh, it was a Star Wars movie. And, uh, you know, and I had fun watching it. And I'm going to watch it again. And, you know, it, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite, to say the least. <clears throat> but it wasn't my worst either. So it kind of sits somewhere in the center. It floats there like that. Um, Rise of Skywalker to me was a um, sending off of, you know, more than 40 years of, uh, of a franchise that will, is only going to continue on with other movies and series and characters and universes and ships and things like that that's going to continue to make an incredible profound impact on the Star Wars community. And as far as long as I'm still around, I'm going to keep enjoying that until my last so uh, we're going to, you know, that's how it's going to be. What were your thoughts of Rise of Skywalker? Talk to me, comment below and share with me what you think of the Rise of Skywalker. What were the things that you appreciated the most of this film, even if you didn't like it? This is Ralph Perez from Strange Planet. Take care.